Hello everyone and welcome to Miko's Corner. Today I will be playing This War of Mine. For anyone who is unfamiliar with this game, I will start off with a simple and easy group of people. And that would be Katja, Bruno, and pa Pavel, I think? Day one. So this is going to be our home base. As you can see, we have our three individuals meandering about at the moment. When the Civil War broke out, many people thought it would only last a couple of weeks. It's been years since government and military surrounded the rebels in the capital, cutting off all supply lines. The civilian population trapped in the city are suffering from hunger, disease, and shelling. Katya met both Pavel and Bruno before the war. She used to be a reporter, while Bruno had his own television cooking show. Pavel was a star of the local football team. Katya even interviewed him once. Now they meet in dramatically different circumstances, looking for food and shelter. What's interesting about this game is the fact that it is war-based, but that you see it from the perspective of the civilians. So one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to search our shelter for items as quickly as we can because we only have so much daylight. Alright, so we're going to start them on digging. Digging takes forever until you can make a shovel. Let's see, we've got water, which will help us create um, cooked food, which is much healthier and will sustain us a little bit longer. Herbs are, can be used for medicine or rolling your own cigarettes. Some people do have vices in this game, specifically coffee or smoking. And then we have our other materials, components, and parts, both electric and regular which help us build tool tables and other workshops. And then we have wood, of course, will help, will help with that as well. Oh. Um. So yeah, it's very much a resource manager and a resource finder but the stakes can be raised very high very quickly there are certain locations that have enemies at them and either you can try to sneak around them and avoid them you can worry about stealing from them if you want to do that but if you steal you end up getting negative mental health on a bunch of these people so we're going to make a metal workshop so we can build a shovel or a crowbar so we can open these locked doors in the house. And have Pavel run down here. So every game starts with someone who is slightly sick. And that is very easily remedied by having them sleep. Or you can take them out that night and sometimes that help resolves their issue. And at one point winter will come and things get a lot worse. Okay, Kat just finished with the metal workshop. We're gonna have her build a shovel. So Bruno up here can get through that 
pile of rubble a lot quicker and then he can move over to the one on the left. And the way I play is I don't feed them until they say they are very hungry and then I feed them some nice cooked meal and they get back up to health quite quickly. Okay, now that we have a shovel, restart Bruno on that task, see if we can build a crowbar. Crowbar also works as a weapon, because some nights you will get raided. And as you can expect, it would be permadeath if someone were to die. Which is much easier with my shovel some good stuff. Bruno. Bruno can be a bit of a jerk, so I always send him off to help our neighbors out when they ask for some help. I'll have him do that instead. Alright, let's see if I can build a bed. Can a radio would be nice as well. You can also create your own rainwater con collector. So every four hours, it would. I don't remember how many it collects. We'll figure that out when I build one. I may have forgotten to turn off some of my modifications for this game because you usually can't build a guitar until you get a broken guitar and then you have to build that with uh, components and the broken guitar but with certain modifications you can just build a guitar with components as though you're building it from scratch which kind of makes sense we are going to build a bed we are going to build it up there, I believe. Alright. You can also switch characters by pressing the tab button. So you can check their bios. Pavel's special ability is he's a fast runner. And his bio begins, Before this whole mess began, I lived with my wife and son in the better part of the city. I haven't seen them in a long time. I hope they are okay. I'm not doing so well, as you can see. Who needs football players during war? Nobody cares about sports when every day can be their last. So I scavenge the ruins like everyone else, hoping for the best. Bruno is a good cook. And as you can see, this is where his vice is listed. He's a smoker. And they go through three cigarettes a day or they get cranky and they start complaining his bio reads before the war I used to own a restaurant I even had my own TV show Bruno's Cuisine I'm sure you've seen it I visited beautiful places where I was filmed cooking exquisite dishes all that seems of no all that seems of no importance now don't you think nowadays you're lucky if you get your hands on some canned meat or a bag of rice and who knows how long this war is going to last. He's a bit of a pessimist. Katya, as we know, is the reporter. She has great bargaining skills, so she can get more items from the traders than an average person. And she's a coffee drinker. I grew up in this city, but went abroad to study and started working as a reporter. I'd been away for years when the tr troubles escalated into a war. I was picked to write I was picked to write reports on it. I'd have volunteered anyway. I was so anxious to check on my parents, but it was too late. I found my house in ruins. My family had disappeared. I've been looking for them ever since. Hopefully they got out. Some of these people have happy endings and some people don't. As I said, it can be quite a bummer of a game. I don't feel too well. I think I have a fever. Pavel says. That's alright, bud. 
We'll get you laying down shortly. Okay, catch is done with the bed. Ooh, we got some medicine, or some uh, bandages. Bandages help with wounds, and medicine helps with illness. Apparently that's how it's deviated. Looks like we're going to finish searching our shelter with plenty of time. The day ends at 8 p.m., I believe. And then night begins. It takes you an hour to get to a scavenging location. Ooh, we got some jewelry. That can be used to buy a lot of stuff from the trader. So we are going to have Pavel go up and sleep. And see if Katya can make any more weapons or tools. Hmm. The first night or two, very frequently, you don't have to worry about raids. Especially because you're going to bring a lot of the tools with you to a location. So I think, oh, I would like to build a crude stove, but I'm going to build a radio instead. Mm, where can I put this? Put it right there at the bottom of the stairs. And then we can check the news and hear about if raids are happening or bombings or what the weather is going to be like. The weather is very important because it tells you when to start preparing for winter. Bruno's still hanging out up there. You can come down, dude. such a great aesthetic too. It's all black and white and gray and there's little pops of light here and there. They recently finished off their final stories and um, that's why on the title screen you saw it said final cut. So if you're looking to purchase it I would suggest doing it now. Alright, the upcoming day should still be nice and warm. Perfect for a stroll in the park. There are two channels for music. There's classical and then there's sort of a pop rock, sta rock station. The rebel leader instructed us to warn the listeners not to cross the front line. Failure to comply could result in death. Despite desperate counterattacks by the rebels trying to lift the siege of Pogoron, the city remains cut off. Government forces do not allow any aid to reach the city, claiming it would end up in rebel hands. Here's the rock pop station. Sometimes I will leave it on there afterwards, because sometimes it improves mood. One of my favorites. I don't think I can build anything else right now. There are these giant gaps in our shelter though that I'll have to fix here soon. Yeah. 
Okay, if I get enough components, I could probably fix it tonight. So as you can see, once it hits 7 o'clock, or 6.30, I think, the time starts to tick down. And it starts to glow red at every 10 minute increment. The temperature is very important as well. As long as it's in the red, it's comfortable enough that no one will get sick. Once it turns gray, it gets a little dangerous. There we go. The night. So we have three options to go visit. And it tells us what it is and what could possibly be there. This block, uh, sorry, the ruined block of flats. This block of flats has seen some heavy fighting. Most people had fled the area before the Vicini rebels clashed there with the military. The battle is over now, and there should be many things left to scavenge. Because people were looking in a rush. We're leaving in a rush. There's food, huge amounts of material, some meds, lots of weapons, and lots of parts. Then we have the garage. Before the war, you could leave your you could have your car repaired there. It was a decent family business run by an inquit sorry, I'm having trouble reading today. Run by an impulsive son and his elderly father. If they still live there, they might be willing to trade with us. Alternative alternatively, we might find lots of useful parts and maybe even some food. They, there's lots of food there, huge amounts of materials, some meds, lots of parts, possible trade, and caution is advised. Places where there are people who are less than friendly, if you do something wrong, if you try to steal from them, you'll get a note that says caution advised. And I know for a fact that the father and son are still alive, so there is possible trade. But I don't have any herbal meds at the moment or a need to go there. So I'm not going to bother with the garage quite yet. The decrepit squat. It's been inhabited by the homeless since long before the war. They've always been struggling with the lack of food and might not have survived the recent shortages. They shouldn't be a threat and we could find some useful things there. Huge amount of materials, lots of weapons, and lots of parts. Uh, usually in the first few days what you want to look for is huge amounts of materials, um, potentially weapons. But parts and materials are the best to stock up on first. That's wood, components, um, parts, electronic parts, etc. You can wait on the food, you can wait on meds, you can wait on cigarettes and coffee. So, each of them, each character has a different backpack size. Bruno has 10 slots available. Pavel has 12, and Katya has 12. Unfortunately, Bruno is not very good at guarding, and I usually don't take him out scavenging. So, I usually have Pavel guard, and Bruno will sleep. But because Pavel is sick, I'm going to have him sleep in the bed tonight, and have Bruno guard, because it's very unlikely that a raid is going to happen. And then I'm going to bring Katya with me, because it doesn't matter between her and Pavel who goes. Especially to the decrepit squat, because you're not running away from something. So I know for a fact that the decrepit squat, I'm going to need a piece of food. I believe I also need a crowbar. I don't think I'll need a shovel, so I can leave that at home in case they need a weapon. They can't use uh, the lockpick as a weapon, though. It's too small. And I might just sell that later. All right. Let's scavenge. All right. It was a room before the war, and now half the city looks like this. So much like the day, you have a limited amount of time to actually scavenge for items. So what I tend to do... Oh, my bad. What I tend to do is I collect it all up in one fell swoop and put it somewhere near the entrance. Because I've had issues in this little area right here, 
little shed, I guess. I don't store it here anymore. I always go at least below. So we're going to put that away. We're going to go up. So as you can see, everything else is shadowed unless you've been there or you have a direct line of sight. And the reason for this, for the reason that she's sneaking, is in case she comes across people. You'll notice if I run, there's um, sort of sound lines that will appear from her body. Here, I'll run over here. See the little vibrations? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. There's a grate up here. I don't think there's anything important back there. But if I get a saw, I might come back here later. Now, I'm not going to lie. I've played this game a lot, so I know that this place is actually safe for her to run around. But I'll take it slowly so you guys can get the idea. There are certain doors that are locked, which is why I came up here versus going through this door here. And sometimes there are clues. The letter says, Dearest, dearest Masha, I found shelter among the homeless. I am no longer a teacher or an artist. I am one of them now. There is not much food, so some of my friends already left us. But do not be worried. I too will seek more appropriate refuge as soon as I finish my painting. So if we come over here, we see this little red section, and it could be a rat, it could be a person. But I know for a fact that it's a homeless person, just hanging out by the fire. And we'll go talk to him in a second. Someone probably painted this picture recently. There are rich-looking people sitting together in a littered, ruined building. A metaphor of some sort, I believe. Sounds like the guy who was writing to Masha. So, we can climb down here. And our homeless dude recognizes us. Well, doesn't recognize, but realizes we're here. Good evening, madam. I'm very hungry. Could you help me? I'm going to open this up real quick. Does it matter if someone became homeless before or during the war? I don't think it does. Everyone's homeless now. One of us was torn apart by a shell. He was standing too close to the wall. Ooh, right there. Oh, see we have some cigarettes. Alright, I will grab those in a second. I moved after I'd lost my house in a shelling. So, this is Grisha. And the only thing he will accept is food. You can't offer him anything else. And then he says, you are a good person. There. And then he says, much obliged, kind lady. You are welcome. We must all do what we can. I have something you may find interesting. Oh, really? What could that be? I will show you. Come with me. He's probably going to go up the ladder, but that's fine. Yeah, okay. That's fine. We are going to go stash our stuff down here. Because you, as I mentioned earlier with the backpack sizes, you can only take so much with you each night. But you can return to a location as many times as necessary. Usually in these locked cabinets are some really good stuff. I'll catch up to him in a second. Grab all. Come on. Go a little faster. Uh. Okay. So he'll go through his dialogue even if I don't catch up to him. Have a look, there's something peculiar behind these barrels. 
and then I knew scavenge part has appeared. <laughs> scavenge opportunity, I suppose, would be the better term. So, let's check that out. Ooh, we have some pure alcohol and we have some jewelry. Usually it's two jewelry. I'm surprised it was only one. You're welcome, dude. Alright, let's go back up. See what else we can find. Now for the rest of the time and any time you come back, Grisha will just be roaming around looking for salvageable parts or food in... Uh, areas we can't actually scavenge. But I've read that a lot of people have an issue with taking these components and parts from Grisha once they realize that he's friendly. But at the same time, I I feel like he probably already has everything that he needs. Or that the areas you see him scavenging in are where he would find something useful. So I think he's pretty pretty set. Alright, so aside from that gated area up on the second, third floor, pretty sure we got everything we need. So. Now we decide what we're bringing home. So unfortunately, wood stacks very small. And actually I believe with the modification I put on here that components stack at six and wood stacks at... No, components stack at four and wood stacks at two. Two or four, I think, because I believe the modification I have allows for three times stacking because it is very annoying trying to bring wood home. So I needed components to upgrade one of our workshops, so I'm going to take a bunch of those home, but I am going to bring a bunch of wood home as well. And make sure to bring home the crowbar. Bring home the parts as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright. And then you can either make your way back to the exit on your own, or they will auto pathfind when you press run to exit. The night ends at 5, I believe. So if I just press that, she'll run to the exit. Sometimes that's super helpful when you're fighting an enemy and have been overpowered. Day two. Tonight I had a really good haul. Alright, so because she was out all night, she is tired, but she's content because she helped that man and she's hungry. So when something new has happened, their bio lights up like that. You can click it and you see, Day one, I shared some food with a hungry man. Despite having so little, we need to remain human. And Pavel says, Poor guy, I understand why Katja just couldn't refuse to share some food with him. Bruno usually doesn't care. So whoever was out scavenging and whoever was guarding is usually tired the next day. If you'll notice, Pavel is no longer sick. So I usually have Katja sleep first <clears throat> because she was out scavenging. It's 
really nice little text box when you see them throughout the day. They talk about the kindness, they talk about how they're feeling. Okay. It looks like no new news, which is good. Throw on some classical music today. Alright, Pavel, let's see. What can... Alright. Let's switch this up. Katya is better at bargaining, so we're going to send her down to the trader at the door. And... Okay, we'll have Pavel upgrade our workshop. Bruno can go to sleep. Alright. So this is Franco. As you can see, he has a bunch of good stuff. He has some canned food. He has some cigarettes, some coffee, some herbal medicine. Regular medicine, some rolled up cigarettes, tobacco, etc. Thing is, I'm not sure what I want right now. <clears throat> or want to give up. Okay, so what's interesting is when you click one of these items, you see down here, it says it would cost you. So he's looking for something of equal value because they are hard to come by. As opposed to something like the quality roll ups. It's quite common, being honest. Or the components, you can have it for almost nothing. So, at the moment, I think we're good on components, although I did read sometimes it's best to buy as much wood as you can because it goes straight to your home storage. And then it'll say, it's very generous of you, meaning that you can ask for more things. I'm going to ask for a filter for our water collector later. Okay. So once we get to find we can have a deal, I always double check with components because they are the cheapest item you can purchase to make sure that we're getting the best bang for our buck. Because even if you can get, even if you can get a component or two extra when you remove a piece of fuel you're still getting a good deal. Of course you can only have eight slots. So I could also get rid of the sugar and get the remaining fuel. I could also get Coffee's kind of hard to come by, and I do like obliging Katya's vice, as it's as it were. I could also help Bruno out because he does get a little bitchy when it comes to cigarettes and smoking. Kind of like my mother. All right, fine. We can have a deal. Okay, so I could give up more. Sorry. I'm gonna get rid of the lock picks, I think. It won't do. Oh. Okay, so 10 will do him good for a little while. What else do I have that I can get rid of? I try not to get rid of the books, but you can always. I am exchanging the herbs for cigarettes. Let's do that for the moment. Ah, there we go. Can I get... 
offer of yours is too damn impressive. Sometimes I'll buy the herbal meds because I can get a lot at the garage for them. Because he doesn't need real medicine, he just needs the herbal medicine. And he's quite generous with it. So I think next I'm going to grab the weapon parts for our future needs. And then... Hmm... Very generous. Wow. Those herbs, I swear. It won't do. Okay. Is there anything else? Hmm. I like to try to keep one regular medicine and one bandage on me at all times. Although, to be fair, I don't get sick very often. It's wounded, I'm more likely to get hurt. Um. Yeah, I think that's good. So... The sad thing about Franco is that he'll just stand there all day. He'll complain, but he'll stand there all day. So if you were building cigarettes and wanted to sell them to him, or, I don't know, building or making moonshine or something, he'll, he'll wait there. It's quite shocking, honestly. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so we have some new things here. We can build a comfortable armchair. We can board up the holes and windows in the building for more protection against looters, which I'll do in a second. But I also want to show you that we can build an herbal garden. Using fertilizer, we can grow some herbs here and use them to make medication or cheap cigarettes. We can improve it to, improve it to grow vegetables, which is a really good idea because vegetables are hard to come by. The herbal workshop to prepare herbal meds, bandages, and low quality roll up cigarettes. You can upgrade it to make real meds and good quality cigarettes. You can do a moonshine still. And my favorite is a trap for small animals. The only small animals left seem to be rats. Still, meat is a rare comedy. commodity, sorry. <laughs> in wartime. We simply have to put in some bait and wait. And really, that is an RNG thing. So for now, because I'm not sure when the looters are going to start, I'm going to do some board ups. Looks like I can, can do all three that I need to do. So we start with that one. Um, ooh, three. Okay, so the weapons that are actually available in this game are the knife and the pistol. The rest of these, sledgehammer, trench knife, cold python. You have to go to the Steam Workshop to find one of the modifications to get these. And I swear to you, I have turned this off, but it keeps coming back. It really bothers me. So I'm going to build a knife just in case, because I often need both a shovel and the crowbar. So at least they'll have one weapon at home. The nice thing about sleeping is it only takes six hours to be fully rested. So you can usually get two people to be fully rested with one bed during the day. So our first board up that he's doing is over here. Yeah, see, Franco is just standing there. Come on, I haven't got all day. What's nice is that you can check what your things are. You see all the materials over here. And then you get a little description. Some thoughts. Fortunately, our shelter is a place where we can get some respite from more. That will change the more things that you build and prepare in your shelter. We only have one chair. We have one bed, but we could use more. It's hard to get a good night's sleep on hard, cold concrete. We've made a radio and we like listening to it. We have a few books. A good book helps forget the horrors of war. Staying here offers slight respite in these hard times. Cigarettes consume per day, three. Cups of coffee consume per day, one. We have breaches in the wall. Our shelter is not safe and we have to constantly be on guard. So it kind of gives you a hint on what you need to do. We'll start another board up with Katya.
Okay, I don't know why Pavel stopped that, but... I'm actually going to have her turn off the music because I'm getting a little... A little annoyed. I don't know about you guys. Get to listen to some of the other music. Hopefully by the time she finishes this, Bruno will wake up. And she can get some rest. One of my favorite things is watching them slide down the ladders. So there's our last board up. Oh, and I forgot to mention it will tell you how long it takes you to actually do it. Oh, come on, Bruno. So our last board up is here in the quasi-bathroom that has been destroyed. Oh look, there's a tank just hanging out in our backyard. Oh, I love the design for this game. It's so cool. I believe it was based in... Oh, I've completely forgotten now. Alright. Kit Kat is sleeping. I'm gonna look something up real quick. So I'll have Bruno come down here. Maybe I'll make him make a make him make a. Okay, the game was inspired by the poor living conditions and wartime atrocities that Bosnian civilians endured during the 1992 96 siege of. Se Sarajevo, the longest city siege since World War II. In November 2014, unlicensed copies of the game were made available online. Well, that's not fun. So, when you have this open... And I have it open with the wrong person. Uh, Katya, go back to bed. Bruno, come down here. Ugh. It's fine. So yes, it was based in Bosnia, which is pretty cool. So when you have this open, time pauses. And as you can see, when you click on something, it'll tell you how long it'll take, and one hour. Some of them will take 0.2 hours, the fuel. Or 0.5. It'll tell you... It'll tell you what materials it'll take. And I feel like I haven't been helping promote this game very well by just rushing through things. So I apologize for that. I'm gonna have Bruno make a crude stove. And I like putting mine in the kitchen. I'm just so used to this game being a time crunch. If you couldn't tell by how fast I've been playing. I haven't been giving it its just dues and advertising it very well. But I hope you're enjoying it all the same. You know, it. right now it's pretty easy. But there will be areas I will... I will go to to show you how difficult it can be and how scary. Hopefully I won't lose anyone when I go there. So I don't think I have anything else I can trade with Marco, so I could send him away if I wanted to. I'm gonna have Bruno upgrade. <gasps> I can't! I need more wood. Okay, that's fine. So the nice thing with Bruno is that when he makes something, he uses less fuel and less water. So if I recall correctly, well I can show you once Pavlo's done. Pavel's done. I keep messing up his name. Um, for 
Single cooked food, Bruno uses one meat, three water, and one fuel. Alright, so... Yeah, I'm pretty good. So I'm gonna send Marco, a Franco away. And Pavel uses five food, five water instead of three, and two fuel instead of one. So Bruno's a really good cook, and he's a really good person to help out neighbors when they come visit. So, if you go to a new place each night, so I had decrepit squat, ruined f block of flats, and garage, you open new areas. And you don't have to go to them, you can keep collecting items from one location until it's completely empty. Or you can go to one that you went to previously. But for now, we're going to read about the military outpost. Those who aim at each other during the day often trade with each other at night. These soldiers have a lot of goods and are willing to trade, especially for alcohol or cigarettes. But be careful, you never know what to expect from them. Lots of food, lots of meds, huge amounts of weapons, parts, possible trade, and a lot of danger. I can't recall the last time I went to the military outpost because it is scary. And I have no weapons at the moment. Sniper Junction. The city center used to be beautiful, with parks, squares, and monuments surrounded by old buildings. Unfortunately, numerous incidents with civilians shot out there earned it the nickname Sniper Junction. We, might f we may find valuable things here, but it's very risky. It has some food, huge amounts of materials, lots of meds, lots of parts, and danger. This is one of the locations of many in this game that can have multiple uh, changes to it. So it's either Sniper Junction or it's like City Park Central, I think, or the Central Park, something to that degree, which is more of a trading location versus a danger location. And anywhere there's trades, you have to be careful not to go steal. Because if you do and someone catches you, sometimes even if they don't catch you, they're going to think that you're an enemy and come attack you. So, if you'll... Hmm... So I think, for the sake of this Let's Play, and to show you the difference in locations, I'm going to have Katya guard... Hmm... No, I'll have her sleep. Bruno can guard. Hopefully no raids ha happen. And we'll have Pavel, who is our fast runner, go to Sniper Junction. I think all I need is a crowbar here. I mean, I I worst case, I'll just come back later with the proper weapons. <clears throat> used to be such a lively place. I miss those times. Watch out, you don't want to get shot by the sniper. True facts. So we're going to collect these two, or at least one of them. Put it in the other. The best is in the hotel. Covers the whole damn street. So as you can see, there are you either take cover behind something or stay away. So you know that they're taking cover when they're crouched over like this. Yeah. And the right click button is to run. So as soon as you hear a gunshot, you run to the next location. And then of course they've seen you so they're shooting at you. Our next is over here. 
Come on, Pavel. Help. Please help me. What's the matter? A sniper shot me. You're lucky he didn't kill you. I was going home with medicine for my boy when I was hit. I wanted to use the sewers, but someone blocked the entrance. Anything else? Can I run? Okay. Please, can you do something about it? Alright, we're running. To that. Our next one, I believe, is here. Because no, you are not safe behind these. Alright. <clears throat> We're gonna run right through this door. This is what Pavel is good for. Come on. Run. Do a little scavenging along the way. Sniper Junction is an area that is very easy to get caught up and run out of time. Especially because there's only one exit, and that's on the right. <clears throat> oh shoot. I gotta stash all my stuff here. Okay. Usually I stash it up here by the statue, but I already grabbed that crap. So our buddy who shot is right here, and someone had blockaded it on this side. So as soon as we open it... Did I just hear someone open the door? Alright, come back here, bro. So now we hear... Some very deranged crying. Okay, there we go. There's some, some better crying. So this dude is going to take forever ever to get back over here and uh, to be fair he's wounded so it makes sense we are not going to force open that door Ooh, we got some nice medicine okay come down here Yeah, stockpiling all the items in one location or a couple of locations makes returning here a lot easier. You don't have to worry about uh, checking the locations again. You just have to go to that one stockpile, collect what you want to bring home that night, and call it good. You don't know how grateful I am. Come with me. I'll try to repay you somehow. That's not necessary, but thank you. All of that is just rats. I... Oh, that's right. Shoot, I forgot about that. That's okay. I'll go to the garage here soon and grab some saws. Hopefully. Alright, I'm gonna grab the stuff up here. That's okay, I'll return to Sniper Junction. There's a box beneath the bed. Take as much as you need. This is the question, too. Like, I don't want to think what would have happened if it wasn't for you. This is another m moral conundrum. Like, do you take from him? Or do you leave it for him to trade later? It's a slippery slope, man. Okay, so... Because I came unprepared and didn't have a saw, I can't get in here. Your dad had some adventures, little guy. I can't get in here or up here on the top floor. 
so I'm probably just wasting my durability of the crowbar by doing this. Yeah, nothing. Nothing to climb up. So I can move all my stockpile back to the front. I brought everything we need, Jacob. We're going to make it. I hope you do. Honestly. I hope everyone makes it. So I won't be running out of time as I usually do, because usually it's like 4 o'clock in the morning, and it's like all of a sudden you have to go. And you're trying to... Sorry, a little distracted. Yeah. Okay. Well, should probably do that. You can get through half of this by running over here to the statue. But then you have to worry about getting shot by the sniper for the rest of the half. So if you get caught out... If you don't... Yeah, if you get caught out by the end of the night... Early morning, 5 o'clock. It'll take you longer to get home. And it's possible they'll come home wounded if they come home at all. So you have to be very careful on your time management. Which is why when it's safe you need to run. Or at least it's, that's what I do. Alright, so today we are bringing home our crowbar. The herbal meds. We are taking home all of our wood. Taking home all of the jewelry. The toy. Wait. And some components. Okay. So. This is one of the times where you don't want to write run to exit because it's very dangerous. You can run up there though. And there's nothing to the right. Okay. And now he can run to the exit. Pavel is back. By the way, if I'm mispronouncing his name, please let me know how to pronounce it. Because I don't want to disrespect anybody. We've been raided. Someone came at night to take our things by force, and I put Bruno in charge of guarding. They didn't seem very determined, so we managed to fend them off. Thankfully, thankfully, we were all armed. None of us were wounded, and the attackers didn't steal anything. We were able to defend ourselves. Sometimes you're not. But that's okay. So if you watch Katya coming down the ladder right here, She'll go over to a chair and start drinking a cup of coffee. You're listening to Radio Pogoren. We regret to announce that our colleague Javin died this morning. He was shot by a sniper on his way to work. He will be missed. Okay. Bruno? Let's try to upgrade our stove. <clears throat> we're safe here. No one can do us harm when we're inside. And during the day. So she's going to sit down. Pull out a cup of coffee, apparently. And start drinking it. I'm not a coffee lover myself. I, uh... I have a the capability to taste the tannins or whatever it is, which is why I don't like coffee, beer, or wine. I always have to have the nice fruity stuff. Oh, we got the kids. The kids are a nice one. So we're going to have Bruno answer the door. I 
Our mom is sick. Please help us. We live several blocks away from here. Our mom's very ill. She needs medication. Could you please spare any? Without your help, she will die. After Daddy went to fight, we have only her. Please help us save her. They need some medicine. His name is Ninad? Ninad? Alright, I think... It looks like it's just one, so I'm going to say yes and give it to him. Thank you. Quickly, let's get the medicine to Mom. Sometimes they ask for two. Or maybe it's the canned food. I think it's the canned food they ask for. That must be later. Alright, so even Bruno's bio changed this time. Meds are hard to come by, but we did the right thing. I agree. Those kids are very brave. They risk their lives walking around the neighborhood to save their mother. On day two, pa uh, yeah, Pavel last night was like, I'm glad I could help that man. Every one of us could be in his position. We just couldn't leave those poor kids without help. That would be callous. Yep. All right, so everyone is still only hungry. I like to wait until we're very hungry. Plus, I only have one piece of food here. So, let's see if I can make a rat trap. I can. Okay. 10, 10, and 5. Hmm. Trying to think about what locations I can go to next that might have food. Because while we're pretty good on components and parts, I think I need to focus on food in the next run. We'll build it, but... But to get... Uh... Uh... Sorry, the bait for the rats is usually food or fertilizer or a vegetable and I don't the only thing I have right now is a piece of meat and because this is very much an RNG situation the rat traps it could take three four days for a rat to come so my favorite thing about Katja is that she'll just drink this until you give her a task but when you give her a task she tosses her coffee onto the floor <laughs> All right. So I can also make saws and axes by upgrading our weapons workshop or our metal workshop, but I need more components. So that's not happening today. Yeah, this war of mine has some really lovely music as well. Hmm. I could make a second bed. At one point you're going to get a fourth individual to come live with you. So, unfortunately... Oh, maybe I can. Uh, mm, no, we'll do this. Put the bed there. That way two people can sleep at once during the day. Make things a little quicker. Actually, I'm going to have Bruno come up here. Because after he builds it, he can fall asleep right there. Yeah, even if when the neighbors come and it's just giving them something like it, we just did with the kids. I still have Bruno answer the door because he can be quite a pessimist and easily depressed and angered. So it's best if he interacts with the neighbors versus the others. Because they're all quite positive and happy. So an update on our things. Fortunately, our shelter is a place where we can get some respite from war. It's still the same. 
Oh wait, let me wait until the bed is built. Because it'll say we have two beds. Alright, go ahead and sleep, Bruno. We have beds and we sleep in decent conditions. If someone gets sick or wounded, they'll have a place to rest. Uh, da, da, da. All breaches in our wall have been boarded up. We should be able to repel minor attacks even if we're all caught sleeping. Not that you should have everyone sleeping at once. It's a little dangerous to do that. But you possibly could. What happened at the Sniper Junction could have ended much worse. That is true. Pavel could have gotten shot. And he could have gotten killed. But that's why we brought him. Is He's a fast runner because he used to be a football player. Alright, so I'm going to end the day early because there's nothing else for me to do. Alright. Tonight we opened the small apartment building. This old apartment building is owned by an elderly couple and their son. They are still around somehow, managing to fend off looters. They probably have supplies like foods and meds, but won't be willing to share them with us. We can try to steal or take them by force. Lockpicks might come in handy. Ruined Villa. They say some people still live there, against all odds. They must have some, some supplies stocked, like canned food and possibly bandages or medicines, but they don't want to trade. If we're desperate, we could try to steal from them. Places I try not to go to. So I am actually going to go to the garage tonight with Katia because of her bargaining skills. And we'll put Pavel on guard duty. I'm going to trade off some of those herbal meds. And I think... Do I need a crowbar? I don't remember. Mm, I don't think I do. So I'm just going to bring the herbal meds. See what I can get for them. Hopefully food, saw, maybe an axe. That would be nice. Especially the saws. They're kind of hard to come by. I wonder if the owners are still around, she says. Someone scrawled on the wall, no more hiding, we meet in heaven. Oh, so the reason I was telling you about stockpiling is that as long as it's a location that is covered from the elements, it should be okay once winter hits, otherwise those piles might vanish. So we go over here, I'm going to climb up. No, because he's going to come out. Hey, you. I need meds for my father. Got some? Be right back, bro. We're going to get from here. He might even go back into his store. Yeah. Into the, the location. So rather than putting my stockpile here, I'm going to put it over here. So, you see these line of sights that are happening? If someone were to walk through there, it's very like if an enemy were to come through here, uh, it's very likely that they would see me up here. Which is not good. But it's very cool how they give you that option. See, if I wanted to also, I could attack this mechanic by hiding in here and then I could attack him but I'm not gonna do that I do want to show you the peeking through the, the the lock area but he as long as you don't steal 
which as you can see the steel option is this little hand with a grabby so I'll make sure I press the trade button and you see he has some great stuff he has a lot of components he has the saws that I was talking about I need one to get through the rest of this section and he also has food coffee and canned food so exactly what I need I can give you a lot for this it's quite nice to give him actual medicine his name is Matey so I'm going to grab two saws one for here and one for Sniper Junction I'm gonna see if I can get some food I can sorry excuse me I'm gonna grab one can of food let's see if I can grab a saw no nope. I kind of need the food, unfortunately. They're going to be hungry tomorrow. Really? Two saws, three food, and one canned food. If I put the canned food back, can I get another saw? Wow. Gotta be kidding you. Won't do. So I can either get four saws and three food, or I could get two saws three food and one canned food. Well, considering we had those kids visit, I know I'm going to need canned food later. They're going to ask for two. One for each of them and one for their mother, I believe. And the rest is what it is. So I say deal. Pleasure doing business with you. Thank you. He's basically stockpiling herbal meds for his dad. Once I get on the left side, I'll show you what it looks like in here. I can't go in, but... So I just need one saw. Oh, whoops. My bad. Right over here. Put them there. Oops. Moving too fast. Yeah, it's only 12 o'clock. There's a grate, but I can cut through it with my saw blade. Okay, if I recall, there's nothing over here. You just see down below. And that noise we saw earlier is just this window opening and closing. I can run. I don't know why I'm sneaking. There's a note. Sophia, we took your jewelry. I am so sorry. We have to pay the boatman who will smuggle us out. We can't wait any longer. I'll make it up to you a hundred times, Leon. It's probably Mady's mother. So, there's Mady's father just laying there, hanging out. Being all kind of sort of sick. Okay. Can you please run, Katya? So, like I said about Sniper Junction only having one exit, a lot of places have two. So, whichever one you're closest to, when you press the run to exit, it'll pathfind to the closest one. <clears throat> oh, there's some fertilizer. Organic waste that we can use as fertilizer in our garden to grow herbs or vegetables, or as bait and trap for small animals. But since I got some food, I'm going to use that instead because you put in one food and you get two back. So it's a gain of one, but it works. Because the fertilizer is a little harder to come by more frequently. So you want to save that for the vegetable garden once you build that. Okay, so this is a locked door. Which if I had a crowbar I could sneak in there, but this is right below their area, meaning everything I'd find would be to steal. And I don't want to do that.
Looks like I got all that I can here. The garage is mostly used as a trading spot, which is why I said I like to save up the herbal medicine. So we're gonna take the saw, the food. Oh yeah, you can also drag your items from here over to here. I just find it easier to right click versus left click, because left click will only get you one over there, whereas left will give you at least... Uh, ten, apparently. I'll grab the fertilizer. And that. Parts. So, I don't know about you all, but I've been pretty lack of energy lately during all this crazy times and uh, I've been meaning to do some recordings for a while now but I just haven't gotten around to it really? I thought I grabbed those oh well but um you know you do what you need to do I'm glad I took a shower yesterday. It made me feel really nice. And uh, just having lazy days is totally fine. I get it. I've been through some stuff myself. Ah, oh, we got raided again. We, uh, someone tried to rob us. They didn't seem very determined. We managed to fend them off. Thank you. Thankfully, we were all armed. None of us wounded. Alright. Katya, go sleep. Bruno, you can come down here and start to cook. Pavel can go up and sleep after he listens to the radio. Okay. So if I had vegetables, I could build two meals at once. More nutritious and tastier than raw food. It gets even better when more filling with vegetables. For now... Oh, that sucks. I'm gonna use up the three that I have. That I just got. Okay. That's fine. Mass graves were discovered in the town of Gravia. The military has secured the area and denies reporters access until the end of the investigation. Cool outside with clouds and possibly rainfall. Our advice for cold evenings is grab a good book and a hot cup of tea and relax in your armchair by the fire. Okay. Pavel, go sleep. Bruno, what are you thinking? Must get some food at all costs. Gotta think of some way to do it. Okay. Bruno can take a serving. He's gonna say he's still hungry though. Wouldn't mind another helping. Too bad. Alright. Let's see what we can build today. Hopefully a vegetable garden. Actually. That was weird. Looks like I didn't build that. 
rat trap from the other day. That's okay. Build another one. If it didn't build it originally, it means I didn't use the materials. It's fine. Just a weird glitch. Doesn't usually happen in this game, but... Alright, first thing first. We are going to put in some raw food. And then we just have to wait. And he'll tell me, still nothing, gotta have patience. And let's see if we can build a vegetable garden. Prove it to grow vegetables, okay. So let's build an herbal garden. We are going to build it. Do it over here. Yeah. Alright, so the fact that the weather channel said that it was starting to get cold means that it's nearing fall. Which means I should start getting ready for winter. Hopefully the next time I can visit the garage he'll have an axe or I can upgrade my uh, weapons workshop. So before I can get vegetables growing, I need a lot more components. A bunch more wood. I need a heat lamp, which I can build with electric parts, I think. Go check that out. Oh, I need to upgrade first. Okay. Nope. Yeah, at some point the upgrades for these workshops take a lot of components and it takes a while. Okay. Actually, let's check the durability. Our shovel and our crowbar are still doing pretty okay. For now, though, I think I'm going to build a, wa a rainwater collector. Yeah, I have just enough wood to do that. That's fine. Really? That doesn't seem like it should work. There's a fire barrel there, isn't there? Should okay. That fire barrel is new. I'll let you know that now. Because usually I put my two rain barrel rainwater collectors in here. And then if I build moonshine and other things, I throw them down here. There's always a little too much room than what you actually need. Hey, they're both awake. You guys can go eat. What is Katya thinking? Okay, so every now and then, every few days, you'll get a... Uh, Oh, come on. You get a little bit of their story. I've been around more than any of my friends and relatives. I've met famous people, readers, found my interviews funny and incisive. But when I try to write down my experiences, I'm stuck. I want to find and hug my folks, not write about them. I wish I'd been seeing them more often. So you get a little insight into what they're thinking and their background. Kind of like a journal, almost. But yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying this game. And keep watching me play it. Or um, even try it out yourself. You know, I, I don't mind if you, if you do that as well. Because it's such a great game. I know it's on sale right now, too, in fact. Alright, I'm going to skip to the end of the day. 
We have not opened a new location, but that's okay. I think I should clear out the decrepit squad. I'm gonna go back to Sniper Junction though and open up a uh, open up the sod area, the grates. Put Katya on guard duty. Bruno can sleep because he's a little bitch. Sniper Junction, prepare. I'm gonna bring the crowbar just in case. I'm gonna call this episode at day five, I think, because most scenarios in this game end on a five or ten increment. Come on, sniper. Sometimes he's a jerk and doesn't fire for a long time. Ooh, that was close. I did not like that. Go. Go, Pavel, go. Yeah, there you go, bro. All right. So because we opened this up in the last one, he can slide down here and run through here. Okay. Yeah, this is just a really long map. So... The father and his kid have finally left. I'll open this door and show you right now. TV's still on. But they're gone. Hopefully they're safe. Found some refuge somewhere. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is hop up here. <gasps> There's a second grate! Oh no, how did I forget about that? Ah, bugger. Shoot. Oh, uh, this is why I should review each area. Ugh. It's been a while since I've played this game. And like I said, I usually refer to a walkthrough. Well, it's not a walkthrough so much as a you need the crowbar, the shovel, at this location. You need two saw blades at this level. This location, rather. And I haven't been doing that because I'm trying to make this go quicker and be a little more authentic. So as you can see, I forgot that there was another saw blade needed here. But that's fine. You can only carry so much back anyway, so what's the point? I love this music though. This this particular track is really good. Ooh, I got vegetable. If only I had gotten it last time I was here, then we'd mm. Okay, that's fine. I'll come back and grab those real quick. Let's go down. Go stash it. Let's see, I need wood, right? We'll do wood and we'll do food, I think. And I did not need the crowbar. Sometimes you have to be careful when you change your position of where he's gonna run. Because if it's in the line of fire, he's likely going to run into the line of fire. Or her. So, I just want to check up here real quick. Let's see. Yeah, uh, no crowbar. Okay. It's fine. fact I could move all this stuff 
up to that first stockpile section because I have the time. It's only 1.40 a.m. Yeah, it's surprising when you do see NPCs hanging around and they don't steal from your piles. At least I find it interesting that they don't do that. Alright, let's go back. That was too close. Yeah, you can see the hotel in the background there. I swear there was a way to, like, move around without dragging the screen. Like, using WASD or something like that, but I can't seem to figure it out. Or maybe it was never a capability. Because I just want to show you the, the location without Pavel accidentally moving on us. So there's the hotel where the sniper is somewhere. He's probably on a one of the higher levels or maybe even on the roof. See all the wreckage in the background. The building to the left. It's really impressive. They did a great job. Okay. No, dude, 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 dude. Why did you do that? Ugh, sometimes he. I swear to you, I press the right click button, and he just started to walk. I was like, dude. Yeah, anytime I've ever gotten shot in Sniper Junction, it was either because I had a slow individual or they accidentally started walking instead of running and I couldn't fix it in time. It is scary and ridiculous. Because, like, I exclusively use the right click button in Sniper Junction, it's the safest way to get through it. What was I getting? Food and wood? Three things of wood. That's fine. Um, I do need. Okay, I'm not actually sure how we're doing on cigarettes or coffee, but that's okay. They can live without it, quite honestly. Like I said, they just get a little bitchy when they run out. Even Katja doesn't really complain, she just says, oh, I wish I could have some coffee. Like, it's not that big a deal, it's Bruno that gets real jerky. Thankfully, those are the only two vices in the game. Because alcohol will do you bad. If you do drink some to improve someone's mood or what have you, basically they can't guard at night and they can't go scavenge. The only thing they can do is sleep at night. So they become useless. But in certain scenarios, it's the only way to get through. Okay, she's drinking. I'll let her drink for a bit. Her coffee. Bruno can come check the news. No new. No. 
I don't think I can upgrade the vegetable garden yet, but I'll check. Oh, so one thing with this game is that it saves in the morning. Okay, so I need that. So each day and night is one section. And once it becomes day again, it saves your progress. So there is no, it's sort of like an, it is not, it is an auto save. You can't save on your own, but um, keep that in mind when you're, when you're playing is that make sure you finish your night tasks before you quit the game. Uh, we'll just do two filters for the moment. Oh, did I cancel? I canceled, didn't I? Two. And then we'll see what else we can build. You can actually stop someone mid-task, and it'll keep the progress of what they did. So I'm gonna stop him mid-task and start up the rainwater collector just in case. You should never know when winter is gonna strike. Right now our temperature is still 16 degrees Celsius. I keep it in Celsius because that's how the game, def that's what the game defaults to. And it doesn't matter because what you're really looking for is the color of it to change. And most walkthroughs will tell you what it is in Celsius versus Fahrenheit. I haven't slept in some time. Katya, go sleep then. I know you just drank coffee, but go sleep. It would make more sense if she, like, used her coffee ration, her daily coffee ration, in the middle of the night while she was guarding, but she doesn't. Don't think I can upgrade the metal workshop either. Yeah, I'm too short on components. I should have only made one filter. It's fine. But yeah, as you can see, since I upgraded the workshop, we have two options for guitar now. And this one is, yeah. So you find the broken guitar a little later in the game and you need two parts and wood and five components to rebuild this which kind of doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me granted using one component to build the guitar is pretty insane as well but this is kind of ridiculous I realize it's a it's a privilege you know it, you don't need the guitar it's nice because some of your characters can play it and it's music and it adds to the levity of the situation it makes them happier, it lightens their mood, but I kind of think this is ridiculous. And I'm not sure what else I can make right now. Oh, maybe we'll make an armchair. Where should we put the armchair? Hmm? Okay, we have a regular chair there, but we have to like break it down before we can actually move it. We'll put it right there by the radio. I feel like I usually do that. There are three shelters, maybe four now. There's this one, which has the F the war over there. And then there's another one that has a nice little treehouse over here, but you can't actually put anything in it. So it's kind of pointless. It's really nice though. It's like an old house. There's the museum. Oh, so there's there's definitely four, and then there's a fourth one. Wait, no, it's not the museum. It's the radio place. Radio place? Radio station. Like someone's home-built radio station. But um, it's kind of nice. It randomizes whenever you start a game, and you might get a different location. Unfortunately, you can only play one game at a time. But really, that's all you really... Really, that's all you really... Yeah, I know English. <laughs> but really, that's all you need to play. is one game at a time. 
And like I said with ending on day 5, is most scenarios end on an increment of 5 or 10. Sometimes they'll last 30 days, 35 days, uh, 25. It's usually around there. Some of them last longer, especially if they're harder. Some of them are nice and short and easy. But this is one of the default first stories you get. So, it shouldn't take very long. But this will be broken up into a few episodes because it will take a while. And my throat is hurting because I have never really done this before. But I'm bored and kind of want to make the connection with others and show you guys some games that may not be seen a whole lot in Let's Plays lately. If at all. So I hope you guys are enjoying this. Um, I have plenty of Steam games that I've never even played, so there will be plenty in the future that I play that I've never played before, and you'll see my first-hand reactions to. Alright, no new locations, but that's fine. I think... Yeah, I'm just going to collect items from the decrepit squat, and we'll call it a night. Call it a night. Call it an episode. So, I don't need any tools, I don't need to bring anything. Our homeless guy is still going to be there, but he's nice and happily fed. Doesn't ask for more food, thankfully. So we just go right here. Collect our items. Ooh, we have coffee here too. Alright. Collect our wood. Electronic components. I'm gonna collect the jewelry because and the alcohol because I believe our trader friend is gonna come visit soon. We'll grab another thing of wood. And we'll grab some sugar because that's good for trading. But like I said, our homeless buddy is still here. He's just wandering around. As you can see, his footsteps are getting closer. Hey man, how you doing? You are very welcome, bro. And we're going to go through here and take our second exit out here. There we are. Katya is back. Now, because your game saves at daylight when it comes here, your whatever happened in the middle of the night, if you were raided or not, may change. And depending on the severity or what they stole, if someone got wounded or not, that might change when I come back. So right now, the night was calm. So, that is the first episode of this war of mine. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to know when I post a new video. Go ahead and make a comment below and let me know if you're enjoying this and if you want to see more. I'll see you next time.